the bows from which your children as living arrows are sent forth. The archer sees his mark upon the path of the infinite, and he bends you with his might, that his arrows may go swift and far. Khalil Gibran. Good afternoon. My name is Benjamin Powell. I was born in Denver, Colorado in 1984. My parents were graduates of Denver Baptist Bible College. At the age of four, uh, my parents moved my sisters and I to Lewistown, Montana, where uh, my dad had accepted a position as a pastor for uh, First Baptist Church. This time frame of my life really gave me a pretty solid upbringing in the Christian community uh, until I graduated high school. One of the greatest things I learned during this time, though, wasn't that a church or that God was found within the church or in those God-forsaken wooden pews, but God was found within, that it was that still, silent voice that you would actually hear the voice of God. A few years later, my parents moved us to uh, Missoula, Montana. Around the age of 10, my dad took me to an air show. While at the air show, we were walking the grounds and we passed a group of men who were adorned in camouflage and a pretty mesmerizing uh, dress uniform. I'd later come to find out that that dress uniform was the Marine Corps Dress Blues, and it was from that moment that I knew I wanted to become a United States Marine. At the age of 17, I uh, signed my name on a contract committing myself to the Marine Corps before I could really legally or technically commit myself to the Marine Corps. It was called the MEPS program, and I would train with uh, the recruiters and other Marines every other week to prepare myself for boot camp. A few months later, the tragic events of September 11th took place. Pretty much ensuring that my time in the military was going to be spent during a time of war and not necessarily during a time of peace like my mom had prayed so fervently for. One week after my 18th birthday, I shipped off to boot camp. I went to Marine Corps Recruit Depot San Diego. The moment I stepped my feet into those yellow footprints, the realization that my next experience wasn't going to be campfire songs and Girl Scout cookies rapidly set in. The next 13 weeks would test my resolve and my strength beyond anything I'd even previously imagined. Yet I found a technique of separating my conscious from the physical and emotional pain that I was feeling. It was a, a, something that I like to refer to as a form of moving meditation. It allowed the strength of my spirit to push my body when I didn't think I had anything left to give. I graduated boot camp and I was sent to the School of Inventory where I would do a few more months of training uh, to prepare me to uh, go to my unit. And then I was assigned to my fleet unit, which was the Bravo Company Raiders, 1st Battalion, 1st Marines, out of Camp Pendleton, California. Over the next three years, my unit would be deployed to Iraq on three separate combat tours. I learned a lot during that time frame. Um, I learned how to uh, properly conduct military operations, as well as uh, personal operations, fire team operations, how to manipulate, uh, I don't even know how many weapons. Um, I was taught about the uh, core values of the Marine Corps, honor, courage, and commitment. Yet, there's two main things that I took away from my time in the military, and that was, one was the brotherhood, and learning true sacrifice. We were, uh, I was raised with two sisters, so I'd never had any brothers. Uh, um, so the, the brotherhood of the Marine Corps was, was something that I, I truly enjoyed. Uh, but we were also taught to sacrifice our lives for the guys to the left or the guys to the right of us. They were also taught that same sacrifice. It's something that I truly miss in our society on a day-to-day -day basis. The other thing was learning to truly listen to and follow your gut instinct, which I associate with my spirit. We were taught that when the hair stood up on the back of your neck, that was 
when you knew you had to make a new decision or go a new route. And if you didn't, that was when mistakes were made and blood would be shed. On my third tour, we were deployed to Al Karma, Iraq, which is just northeast of the city of Fallujah. Blood was shed. We lost five Marines out of my company. We took 17 losses out of my unit and took over 50 casualties. I was sent home due to a combat-related injury. I went through two surgeries and uh, witnessed my daughter being born. Then I was honorably discharged from the Marine Corps. The next five years, the years from 2006 to 2011, were some of the darkest times of my life. It was a downward spiral. There was a lot that I learned during that time, a lot of good people that I was involved with, yet it was one step forward, three steps back, a half a step forward, two steps back. I had lost all purpose in life. I was no longer considered a Marine. They say once a Marine, always a Marine. But uh, at that point, I wasn't considered a Marine by any of society. So uh, I lost purpose. I lost drive. I didn't know who I was anymore. Um, I went through a divorce. I lost the custody of my daughter. The VA labeled me with post-traumatic stress disorder, and they prescribed me with enough antidepressants and sleep meds to knock a full-grown elephant to the ground. In turn, creating an addict. I was addicted to that, to that fog. I was addicted to uh, not even being able to hear my spirit anymore. I became addicted to uh, alternative forms of medications, ones that I would try myself, uh, which ultimately also didn't work out either. I couldn't maintain a job. I got involved with the wrong groups of people, and I literally found myself waking up in basements and garages all over the country, crying out for help. It was impossible for me to maintain a relationship of any kind. I couldn't even hear that voice of the archers. I was selfish. I wanted to do things on my own. I couldn't hear that still silent voice, the only voice that was responding when I was begging for help. Finally, I'd, I had had enough. I, I couldn't do it anymore. I, I didn't want to become another number added on to the statistic of 22 veterans that commit suicide a day. So with tears in my eyes, I kissed my daughter goodbye, and I went onto the road. I'd heard a quote that went something along the lines of that, uh, to be found first, you must be lost. So I... I got lost. I did everything I could to find my mark upon that path of the infinite that I had detoured from over the past five years. I would throw dirt into the air. And the way that the wind blew it is the direction that I would turn. I would come to an intersection and I would uh, see an insect or a butterfly cross my path and I would turn and follow that. I was doing everything to strengthen that voice within. Over the next year, I was led to uh, the New River Gorge in West Virginia. I was led to uh, the head of the Tow River in South Carolina. I went to the base of waterfalls in Tennessee and to a black hole in Colorado. It was at these places that I found silence and that I found solitude. It was at these places that I was allowed to quiet the noise of society and what culture was telling me that I had to do with my life. I was reminded of my, my upbringing, studying scripture that God has found within. And I was reminded of my time in the military that if you don't follow that gut instinct, if you don't follow your spirit, 
you'll inevitably go down the wrong paths. While I was traveling, I, I stopped to visit my grandmother. Ultimately, I ended up working on a couple cattle ranches while I was there, but one day she, she stopped me and she asked me, if, if you had a little bit of money, what would you purchase with that money? At that point, I had been on the road for almost eight months. I felt that I had heard what I was supposed to do. I was, uh, I was given gifts, and through those gifts, I was supposed to use that to encourage others to find their mark upon their path. So I responded with, most likely I'd probably purchase a camera. With a smile on her face, she turned and she went back into her office to do whatever it was that she was doing in there. The next few months I continued to spend on the road, uh, continuing to find places of silence, places of solitude, places uh, that I could meditate and continue to contemplate and to strengthen that voice so it wouldn't get buried again. Finally, I felt led to return to society. Once I returned, I was still sleeping on couches, I was still sleeping out of basements, but at that point, it didn't matter. I had finally learned, for me anyways, what the definition of faith was. That as long as I stuck to my ideal, as long as I stuck to what I felt that the Spirit was telling me to do, that my needs would be met, and that the tools I needed would be provided for me. That archer works in mysterious ways. That spring, I got the heartbreaking news that my grandmother had passed away. And in her passing, I found out what she had been working on in that room that day she asked me the question. She had left me just enough money to purchase my first camera. Now at that time, it was hard for me to spend that money on something that I thought was a toy or uh, a hobby, yet, from finding places of solitude, that my internal voice was screaming at me to do it, to continue to go with what your ideal is. I also got encouragement from Heather, uh, who encouraged me to, to purchase that camera. The moment I purchased that camera, I I dedicated my life to learning the art of photography, of learning how to portray emotion through an image, how to show feeling Uh, from a picture. I learned everything I could from uh, composition to uh, framing to contrasting lights to to colors and how to manipulate my camera and make it do what I had envisioned it to do. That was four short years ago. Two months ago, I opened my first gallery in downtown Coeur d'Alene. Now when people come through my doors, my goal is not to sell a piece of artwork. My goal is not to encourage them or push them to buy a piece of art to hang in their house. My goal is that they will stand in front of one of my pieces and for just a moment, just a heartbeat, that silence and that solitude and my spirit will speak to theirs. And their eyes will be open to what their true potential could be. that for just a moment, their spirit will scream at them and say, you have a mark upon the path, and you have a purpose. Silence in the wild. 
Solidarity from society's static noise allows harmony with the universe, giving our inner voice the ability to speak and demanding the attention of our external self, revealing life purposes, exposing latent gifts and talents, and promoting unselfish values. Ringing the bells of truth about our true spiritual nature within. May all of you hear that voice of the archer, and may you fly swift and far, and let your light shine brighter than any lighthouse on our coast. Thank you.